Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. You know, I like original on the store, and that's what this car is. You know, a few weeks back, we did a piece with uh, David Schwaggio from um, Speedcore. You know, they do the uh, carbon fiber pieces for Mustangs and Camaros. They do just amazing work. You probably remember seeing their pieces on the show here. And we got to talking about car history and stuff, and he told me his grandfather was a racer. And to prove it, he brought his grandfather's car. Uh, and uh, he's got a scrapbook, and there's a whole lot of history behind this thing, and it's really cool. Dave, come on in. Grandfather or uncle? Grandfather and my uh, two great uncles as well. Uncles. Yeah, okay. the Marchese brothers. The Marchese brothers. Yeah. It just sounds like <laughs> <laughs> the Marchese brothers. I love that name. And what part of Italy are they from? Uh, Sicily. Now, so were they born said. in Italy? Yes. Oh, so, so they first... have the accent, the go racing. Yeah, uh, the whole that's... nine yards. Yep. Uh, and they raced American cars as opposed to. Maserati or something, Fiat or anything like that. Yeah. They're like the Offenhauser. Okay. Yeah, especially in the beginning, uh, 1919, they started racing. So, wow. Yeah. 19, and they did Indy too, right? They did Indy in 29. Yeah. Okay. And this is what's called a midget, right? Correct. Now, that's not a derogatory term. That's just what they called them back in the day because they were, now you'd have to call it a little person's car. Right. But, <laughs> but it, it was midget racing. And these things were fast and really dangerous. I remember seeing these things you know, Ascot flipping over in the air, just crazy. Tell people exactly what we have here. So it's a 1947 Marchese Special. So basically my great uncle built the whole chassis, as you see, chromoly, and that's in 47. So are you familiar with Curtis? Of course. Yes, yeah, sure, Curtis. So my uncles and grandfather built the body. Curtis did some work in exchange for supplying Curtis a chromoly frame as well. So they oh. had a lot of barter system. And the Italians used to, of course, be very good um, fabricating and making everything chassis wise and um, basically they would share their work and um, uh, that races. was always fascinating to me because you'd always hear this name Andy Granatelli came over and let us borrow this and Fred Duesenberg came over yeah just the fact that it was such a small world all these guys kind of knew each other these legendary characters back in the day yeah um, it's I, the truest form of racing back then. So. And what does this car weigh, do you think? It's 820 pounds. Okay. So 140 horsepower. Wow. So for pretty then, fast. that's pretty fast. And so. a three speed gearbox, right? Correct. Yep. And you shift with the gearbox between your legs. That is correct. And if you hit anything, ah. <laughs> there'd be no grandchildren. That's right. <laughs> you wouldn't be here. That is correct. That's right. That's yeah. right. But a three speed out of a car, I mean, just out of. LaSalle, probably something like that. Yeah, they, a lot of guys were using quick changes at this time, um, oh. but they were actually using a differential, and they were one of the first in 47 to be doing that. So, yeah, and it was a little bit uh, better of a setup for them. So. Well, you could do a lock rear end because you're on dirt, right? That's correct. Okay, yeah. and this is dirt, right? This is real down and dirty. Yeah. Guys would come back and you'd take their goggles off, and you'd see the whole face would be just covered with dirt and dust. But the real story is under the hood. Isn't That's it? right, yeah. Very cool motor. Take a look at this. So it's an Offenhauser engine. So yeah. So basically, top speed on this. I think they took it to the salt flats at one time, and I think they did about 140 something. Wow. So that's pretty. How fast. many cubic inches? I think 98. If I'm 98. Not mistaken. Now yeah. these are derived from. Harry Miller developed this engine, and then Leo Goshen, and then uh, Fred Offenhauser, right? So they all came from the same shop right down here in downtown LA. I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing. Even Anturo Bugatti copied this top end yeah. for his famous Bugatti. So and a they lot had great of that, success. Yeah, a lot of that stuff originated here in America. Basically, so Chuck Stevens set the record in Milwaukee with this in one mile. So that was 1951. So they had a, kind of the racing history success was basically 47 through the early 50s. And then the evolution of the cars obviously changed after that. So, um, so it was, uh, Basically, um, they called it an in and out box. That's what they were referring to with the drug okay. drive. Yeah. Yep. yeah, we have an in and out here, but it's a totally different thing. <laughs> yeah. It's a really good hamburger. Right. Yeah, it's it is. Yeah. Now, what do we have here? This, is this a quick it's, No. Brake? Oh, that's a brake. Okay. Yep, that's a brake. So. But you have a foot brake also, right? No, that's it. Oh, that's it. That's Just it. a rear wheel brake? Yep. So they're oh. actually magnesium. So uh, drums, believe it or not, with a different liner. So they did it for lightweight. Chromoly frame, lightweight. Magnesium, lightweight. And then they had a liner in it so it wouldn't obviously catch on fire. So. Wow. Yeah. And these are just beautiful motors. And I wish we could start it, but 
There's no oil in it now. Is That's it? correct. No. Wool seals and wool seals. And so you put oil in it, it just leaks out. And then, but when it got hot, the seal would swell and keep some of the oil. Right. Yes. Inside. Man. If it quit leaking, that meant it was empty. Okay. And what do we have here? This. Is this a dry sump for the oil, or is that? Uh, I believe it's for cooling, if I'm not mistaken. I'm is not it, sure. Is this water in here? Yep. Oh, okay. Yep, oh, I yep. see. Radiator. I yeah, see. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. cooling okay. tank and then yeah, radiator. That's drain. Yep. Okay. Yep. Boy, what a compact, sexy little motor that is. Are those Stromberg carburetors on there? Uh, I believe so. Okay. Yep. Wow. And no brakes. Oh, well, you do have brakes in the front. There are. Yeah. They drive off of that. And they drive mm -hmm. off of that as well. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of cool. This is your grandpa's. Yeah, um, some, uh, so that's kind of a scrapbook that we have and uh, racing history. So Actually, it's exactly a scrapbook. It's not kind of one. <laughs> it's exactly a scrapbook. In fact, it says scrapbook right on it. So that, that's a dead. Well, this is pretty cool. I mean, look at all this stuff from the 20s. Yep, through uh, almost 1970. So my grandfather ran the Milwaukee Mile. And uh, they had a lot of successes. Actually, they had more races at the Milwaukee Mile than they did at the Indianapolis uh, Speedway. Yeah, and the Milwaukee Mile still exists to this day. They have a reunion. Yep, exactly. Because this is the way people... Now, tell me about this shop. What is this here? So that was the shop that Marchese Brothers operated out of. So things back then, obviously, were a lot more modest. And don't forget, yeah. everything on the car was hand-built with, you know, obviously, archaic technology. Everything was hand-formed, and that's what they operated in but Milwaukee. But it's really not our kid. This is advanced. For it's the advanced time. for the time. Overhead yeah. cam, and yeah, very yeah. cool. But the machines they used was very archaic. Right, right. And it's amazing they could get that technology out of that machinery. Driver badly hurt in crash. Is that your grandfather? I don't believe so. Okay. I think these are just uh, from the track when he was running it. Because look at this. So. There's no roll bar. There's no seatbelt. Because this was days when you wanted to be thrown clear. You just <laughs> wee, just yeah. wee, just car flips over, you're thrown over there. <laughs> that is true. In the true. movies, they always get up and they go, whew, and they get back <laughs> in the car again. You know? That is true. And they, and, they, and they drove with cigars in their mouth, right. which is yes. hilarious. <laughs> and it's Carl Marchi. Look at that. Yeah, so that was my great uncle, and that's when they were racing you know, in Milwaukee. And uh, basically, a lot of people at that time was very competitive, and a lot of people had full-time jobs, and they still raced. Yeah. But uh, my family, you know, did it full time. Yeah, and you so made no money. You got like a ham if you won the race. <laughs> right, exactly. Hey, here's a canned ham. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Italian flyer in big race. It just sounds like, oh, man, this thing is really cool. And who kept the scrapbook? Your grandmother? So my mom, yeah, we have um, all the history, and um, she put this together in this nice book for us so the family could, you know, kind of Milwaukee honor. Speed Boys. <laughs> And look at that, look at that guy with the fancy, that's an expensive coat. Yeah. Looks like he was making that's some money. That's my grandfather. Yep. Making some money back in the day. See, this stuff is really great to me. I think all this stuff is. It's a lost history that yeah. um, inspired me, but we're hoping that what we do inspires the next generation yeah. to be into cars. Not necessarily self-driving cars, but just to be into something. And like my grandfather, all these Italian guys were like 5'4", five, 5'5". Five, five. You know, it's not like, you know, until they came to America and started eating giant cheeseburgers, they get these six foot Italians, because yeah. most, most of them are pretty little. <laughs> At In-N-Out. Right? Yeah, In-N-Out, exactly. Yeah. Wow. Marchese out of gas. Marchese is Roby Victor. Driver is injured. Man, this is, this is really something. That's a great piece of history. Carl Marchese has close call. Yeah. I guess when you were a little kid, this must have seemed unbelievable, huh? Oh, yeah. I mean, especially at the time, you know, you're not watching TV. You're, the races are a huge, you know, draw on the weekend. And, and were these guys alive when you were a child? Yeah. So my grandfather uh, lived with us, so 1975 through when he passed away in 1991. So big inspiration for me. You know, he made it through the Depression. Right. He made it through, you know, everything um, up through... The 70s, uh, you know, worked into his 70s, and then um, you know retired, and it was he was a great inspiration on my life. So that helped me do what I do. Yeah. Did he see you go into the car business? He didn't live long enough for that, oh, but okay. I'm sure he knows sure. somewhere. And look at all this hand hammered work here. Yeah. Just really, really cool. And now your mom is selling this car, huh? That is correct. Yeah. Okay. So well, we got a website in case people are interested in buying this, they can contact you. Yeah, uh, it'll be under uh, salvagiomarchese.com. 
Oh, that's easy to remember. SavaggioMarchese.com. Yeah. The only part of that I can spell is dot .com. Now spell the whole thing out. S-A-L-V-A-G-G-I-O-M-A-R-C-H-E-S-E.com. All one word. Okay, All there one, you go. Yeah. yeah. Cause don't even try to guess on your own. But anyway, if you're interested in this car, I just want to put this as a bonus feature. We can't run it because there's no fluids in it now. But uh, it was just fun talking to him while we were doing the video on the carbon fiber Mustang to see this piece of family history. So if you're interested in buying this, give him a call. A little bonus feature. Hope you liked it. Mm-hmm. <laughs>